And we're back now with uh, two of Washington's top political reporters, Karen Tomody of the Washington Post, John Harris of Politico. And John, I just cannot get over the irony of what we're seeing here. President Obama having trouble with his base, the people on the left, the Republicans having trouble with their base, the people on, on the right of their party. Robert Gibbs, the White House press secretary, uh, attacks what he called the professional left last week, saying that these people wouldn't be satisfied if Dennis Kucinich was right. president, and words to that effect. Is this by design? Is there more here going on than, than the surface? I think the frustration uh, is clearly real, and it's one that we've been hearing privately from uh, the White House for a long time. Uh, and so, you know, it wasn't totally surprising that this came out in public. Uh, it, it does seem almost by design the way that the White House hasn't really backed off. So, look, yeah, these guys are uh, are uh, foolish if they think they can get a better president who's more in tune with their agenda than Barack Obama. And to be specific, I think it's, uh, it pays to be precise about this because there's a group of commentators, uh, mm -hmm. that's what he meant by the professional left, who are, is unhappy with President Obama. If you look at the polls, self-identified liberals are happy with this president. What do it's you think he's looking for a little bit of a fight with the people on the far left so he can appear more of a centrist candidate going into these elections? But there is uh, that word from the Clinton era, remember, triangulation. Yes. You know, like there are a lot of people speculating that this seems to be uh, the Obama's uh, 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 administration's effort to say, hey, we're in the middle, yes, our left is uh, unhappy and, and at a time when independents are fleeing the Democratic Party, according to the polls, maybe they don't mind that getting out there. And, and Democrats seem uh, determined to run against George Bush. Is that going to work, Karen? You know, I think there there's real limits to how far they can get doing that. And as much, basically, people are very worried about the economy and not just how they're feeling about the economy now, but, but what they see going forward. And unless unless people feel like it's getting better, the Democrats are going to have a problem this fall. Well, you know, uh, we talk about all these social issues and cultural issues, but the fact of the matter was Ronald Reagan, in his first midterm, lost 26 seats, uh, Republicans in the Congress, and unemployment then was only 8 percent. And now, you know, as we were saying, People see the unemployed now as maybe the swing vote here. But also, if you look at the direction of unemployment, it was actually, it was steeper going going up at that point. And again, that's the real issue. It's what people see in the coming months. I don't, well, I mean, I, I kind of take issue with what Ed Gillespie says about some of these Tea Party candidates. I have thought from the beginning Tea Party was a bigger problem for the Republican establishment than maybe it was for Democrats. Right. It, where do you see some of these candidates going, John? Isn't it going to be very difficult for them? Well, it would be interesting to, uh, and Ed was valiant uh, here on the show, it would be interesting to talk to him on Truth Serum uh, as to what he really uh, thinks about this. There's no question that uh, uh, the sort of professional operative class, uh, of which, frankly, all your earlier guests uh, were, yeah. were part of on the show, uh, they think that they, uh, Republicans have not nominated the most electable candidates, certainly in Nevada, where Harry Reid could have been knocked off. Now he looks to be the favorite for re-election against Sharon Angle. Uh, there's no question that the candidate in Colorado, Ken Buck, was not the choice, uh, is not regarded as the most electable. Uh, by and the, that, by the that does play into to the degree the Democrats have a strategy. They keep saying over and over, this election is a choice, it's not a referendum. It's very difficult for them to sell the policies that are out there. So their best hope and where they're going to be spending all this money that they have, they have a huge financial advantage, is in going very sharply negative between now and do, November. Do you think, Karen, that as good a politicians as they were and as smart as the campaign was that uh, Barack Obama ran, especially against Hillary Clinton. Uh, have they lost a step here? They seem to be doing some things that uh, sometimes suggest they might be a little tone deaf, like Michelle Obama going off to Spain uh, on this uh, vacation, taking 70 Secret Service agents, and they don't seem to understand why some people say, uh, was this trip really necessary? Well, it, it, that in and of itself, I think, is not such a big deal, but it plays into this narrative of somehow the, the Democrats, that uh, the Obamas are out of touch with the things that ordinary Americans are struggling through, which is why you saw them in Panama City, Florida this weekend. It was both an effort to cast a vote of confidence in the Gulf, but also to get back in touch with where ordinary Americans are. All right. To be continued, thank you both.